Greetings. Um, this is the start of the Unit 4 notes. I think this particular one's going to cover 4.1 National Legislative Overview. Um, so it's going to focus on federal government. Uh, let's go ahead and get the doc. Let's get your pages set up. If you open up the slideshow through the links and have the doc open over here with your copy of it, um, I'd go ahead and let's make the copy now. That would be helpful. Then go ahead and I think it's good to get rid of the original. Though I may want it, so maybe I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to go ahead and put it right there. Um, anyway, uh, once you've made your copy, go ahead and put your name, date, and period. Eight. This is going to be started. On Valentine's Day, I think. And then, once you've opened up the slideshow, I would just let the video play on the Promethean. I would do the split screen. And that's going to set it up nice for you. I just like to make it a little smaller so I can see more of it. And I move my tab over. And then this is pretty good. But even that I'd make a little bigger. Maximize the space. Okay. Uh, what you're looking at is a picture of Congress. Uh, why do our, what do our legislatures do? Basically what they do is they pass laws. And they discuss passing laws, and that's their main purpose. Let's see if we can get a better look at this visual. It does matter. Um, they exercise their constitutional power to pass laws. They, they balance power with the executive and the judiciary. And they represent the people, the constituents. So that's really democratic and um, it's indirect democracy, but it's democracy. Um, and it's the really representative element of our democracy. People rule, but they choose others to do the day-to-day -day work of government to represent them. Congress is an example of this. They have jo the job of translating the public will into public policy in the form of law. Here's what you don't wanna do when you're doing this. Don't just be in a big hurry to fill out the blanks and answer the questions. The main deal here is learning. So I would fill it out as I go along because that's why I'm filling it out as, as we go along to give you enough time to do this comfortably and keep thinking. If you just go through and fill out the blanks, you're just going to tune out. I could give you this all filled out. The point is not filling out the blank. The point is to learn the best you can. Um, if you do nothing while you there's notes, then you typically tune out too. You do too much, you can tune out too. This is the right balance, and it's not that much. So please do it as we go along. Go faster, go slower, and you'll get as much as you can out of this. What's the major job for Congress, the legislatures? The main thing is to, to make the laws, but they also represent their constituents, people that are in their voting area. They didn't even have to vote for them. Uh, they serve on committees, on special groups of Congress. Uh, they try to serve their constituents' needs and their politicians. They try to get elected. As a legislature, the primary role is to make a law. As represent, this is a bill. I think I might be showing you. I'm just a bill video. We'll see. I think I got a little couple clips, um, but it might be at the end of this. As representative of the people. They have four voting options. They can be considered trustees, acting with the trust of the people. Where they independently vote on their own judgment, regardless of the view of their constituents, because if they didn't want them to do that, they shouldn't have elected them. There's the thinking. They could act as delegates. They could act 
exactly according to the wishes of their constituents as they see it. There was an S there, but okay. They can act as partisans voting with their political party. Partisanship is staying with your party. And they can act as politicos, a delicate balance of the three, depending on the situation. There's this West Virginian congressman. They keep looking at what he's doing. He's a Democrat, but he votes independent on a few issues, too. So it's complicated, I would say. Anyway, uh, as committee members, uh, they will Congress proposed laws called bills. These are their proposed laws. The bills go to the committees who sometimes modify the bills. Sometimes they think too much. Sometimes they think not enough. Uh, but they decide which votes are going to go to the floor to be voted upon. The committee decides that, not the whole group. Because a few people can look closer than um, a large group. They serve an oversight function or the committee can check to see if the executive is following the policies um, that meet the bill. So they come back in and say, oh, well, did you do what you said you were going to do? And they, they, um, they really are the follow-up group. Here you see a bunch of magnifying glasses where they're inspecting what's happening. And sometimes they'll take trips in to do that too, um, within the country or, or even without the country. Like Foreign Policy Committee might take a trip if there's a ongoing conflict. Anyway, uh, servants of the people, they try to help their constituents on their voting area. Um, the people they represent with red tape or complications or any difficulty they might be having with government. Problems such as Social Security, veteran benefits, passport issues are common ones where uh, congressional fish officials may get involved, try to help their people. Um, they feel obligated to do this um, because if they don't, they will risk losing votes, you know, in the next election. Um, they're one of the most powerful lobbies, the NRA. Um, they really watch what, how people vote, and uh, they throw their money on the people that don't vote how they want to vote. I guess this is people in our town. The constituents here are, they look kind of like, I don't know, somebody represented somehow. It looks like Downton Abbey to me, though. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, Anyway, politicians speak most, most spend a lot of their time just trying to get ele elected. You might see a few politicians you recognize here. I see Donald Trump. I see Hillary Clinton. I see, oh, that's her, I see Bernie. The uh, Anyway, these are a couple of important uh, current Notable politicians, they spend most of their time seeking re-election. Uh, in the House, each term lasts two years. So they're pretty much constantly running for re-election. And they're numbered consecutively. House is every two years. The Senate is every six years. So basically a third of the Senate is up for election um, every two every two years. Uh, the current term number 115, oh, that's old. Uh, the first term began March 4, 1789. Let's figure out what the current term is of Congress. Seventeenth. So it goes from twenty twenty one to twenty twenty three. Let's change that. Current term began 
so we're on 117. Uh, January 2021 to January 2023. Update things. It's the 117th Congress right now. Okay. I don't think there's anything wrong with using Wikipedia on something this simple. It's usually pretty correct on the simple stuff. So go with that. Even though you might not want to always go with it. There we go. Now let's continue. Uh, the first term was March 4th, 1789. 1933, the 20th Amendment changed uh, the start of Congress to January 3rd of every odd number year. Why they changed from March to January with the 20th Amendment. Here's the thing. Uh, the president's coming in like the third week of January. So why would you want to have two months of the old Congress with the new president? That's the thing. So it's uh, it's it's been moved to January to align with uh, presidential succession. Right in this. I guess I already wrote it in. Uh, who's pictured here? I think you got Biden. In the back one, you have Kamala Harris, Pelosi. The other one, you got Obama, where Biden was serving as VP. All right, moving on. That's, what do they mean by session? Congress assembles yearly, what's known as a session. It's basically the term for which Congress will meet. Recess, these, these tend to be short breaks during the season. I know they have one um, Christmas time. Um, I don't know. I think they might have one in spring. There's definitely one in summer. Um, they don't work the whole time. They, they, they schedule some off time. Uh, but they mostly are working. Congress chooses its time to adjourn or end each session pick. This can get political. Both houses must agree to adjourn, but people like vacation, so yeah, usually happens. Pre president can prorogue, which is to make an early end to the congressional session if the House and Senate cannot agree. I don't know if that happens that often, though. Good question. Are Congress members representative of the American people? Yes. Whether they want to be or not, I mean, that's that's their job. That's what they're supposed to do. Um, occasionally, there are special sessions of Congress where there's an emergency meeting. It's happened 26 times in in basically 230-something years. Um, but it's mostly to deal with any emergency that comes up, particularly military emergencies, sometimes financial emergencies. It's It wasn't used... Or the terrorist attack, 9-11, I'm sure. It might have been a special session call. Uh, it hasn't been used since 1948. Oh, since Congress meets nearly year-round now. Uh, but especially when travel was farther, um, it was a little more common to try to get people to come back. Would sometimes go do a bunch of their winter at home. Um, it's used more commonly as a threat that we're going to have to have a special session during the end of a term. Because these congressmen have much of a vacation plan. Um, if Congress is not acting on a president's priority bill, then they're going to get upset. They might threaten to have a special session. All right, go ahead and discuss this question. Think, write down your response and share. Our Congress members are representatives of the American people. Uh, don't worry about what I write. Just write something.
the next question. Characteristics of member after we discussed. I call a couple people. Characteristics of members of Congress are not a cross section of the American people. That's true. It's mostly white people. It's white, mostly white males, but not just white males. The average member is white male in the early fifties. Older white men. People my age, apparently. Uh, there are women in Congress. In 2014, there was 84 in the House, 20 in the Senate. But that's out of 535, so there's still a major minority. Nancy Pelosi Cal from California is the former Speaker of the House. Uh, first woman to hold that position. Uh, ethnically, I think this is probably 2017 numbers. House has 43 African Americans, 33 Hispanics, 10 Asians, two Native Americans in the Senate, two African Americans, four Hispanics, one Asian American. So seven out of 100 senators are people of color, which is much less than overall in America. Uh, more characteristics. Nearly all are married and have been average of two kids. Um, and have some kind of religious affiliation. Apparently, not too many atheists in Congress, I guess, or foxholes. Um, many have college degrees. Many of those degrees are advanced degrees. Lawyers. Uh, over a third of the House are lawyers. Uh, kind of makes sense, too, because the reading about prospective laws, having some expertise there makes sense. Over half of the Senate are lawyers. Uh, Kamala Harris is a, a lawyer. Uh, some, she went to my law school, as a matter of fact, Hastings Law. Uh, some are millionaires, though in the House, many do depend on their salaries. Uh, most have considerable political experience. They're mostly upper middle class Americans, tend to be capable. Compensation. They don't make a ton of money. Really don't. Let's talk about the money they do make. Um, I mean, more than most, but not crazy more than most. Salary is 174000 a year. I'm not sure if that's totally current. Um, but it's important they make enough money that they're not too susceptible to bribery. Uh, they get a lot of non-salary or fringe benefits, special tax deductions, travel allowance, full medical care, office and staff, franking pr privilege, free postage. That's valuable when you're running for re-election. Because you're constantly sending out stuff um, to try to get to the people. Uh, Congress pay is an issue because Congress passed laws set to compensation. Uh, the 27th Amendment allows um, a way for Congress people to get more compensation. Uh, Speaker of the House gets 223000 according to this. But I think individuals want to serve in Congress. It's mostly about power. Um, $174,000 a year. Power, privileges. What do our legislatures do? They, they do these things. They make the laws, represent constituents, serve on committees, represent and serve constituents. Uh, they're committee members in Congress, servants, and they're politicians. So they're running for office. That's spelled wrong. There we go. Anyway, that concludes this video. Hope, hope you found it helpful.